ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Aussie StarCraft. It has been a little while, so I hope you are ready for some sweet StarCraft 2 action. Of course, the last game we cast here on the channel was an incredible game between Life and First, which resulted in one of the funniest draws that we saw at IM Toronto, and probably, to be honest, one of the funniest draws we've seen thus far in 2014. So, without uh, any further ado, we bring you the re-game between our blue Protoss player in the bottom left-hand corner. It's going to be first against our red Zerg player in the top left-hand corner, which is going to be Life. So game one, of course, was a hilarious uh, Protoss vs. Zerg uh, game, wound up into, as, as I mentioned before, quite a, quite a ridiculous standoff there at the end. So we'll see how things play out, of course, in this re-game. Of course, neither player gains a point for a draw, and the game is just uh, recreated and played out from the beginning. So uh, we'll see if they elect to go for similar strategies, or whether they decide to mix it up with a different strategy here on Deadwing. Looks like life uh, may, may well be going for a hatch first opening. Certainly nothing uh, strange about that on a map of this size. Of course, there is something like 20 bases on Deadwing. Makes it makes for quite an easy map to go for. Quite greedy economic opening. So be surprised if we don't see a similar move for out of first. Probably drop a Nexus before uh, dropping his gateway up in his base, and based on the amount of minerals he's hovering, imagine we'll see that thrown down momentarily. We can see Life has gone for a hatch. The question is, will Life go for a very greedy three hatch before pool, or will he in fact uh, drop his spawning pool before moving moving out and taking that third hatchery? Often when a Zerg player does scout, and we have the Overlord making its way down the left hand side of the map now, often when a Zerg player does scout and see their Protoss has either forged fast expanded or gone for a very greedy Nexus first opening. The easiest reaction for a Zerg player is in fact to just drop their third base as they know there will be some time before the Protoss player can actually muster enough forces to attack. Looks like the first will in, oh, sorry, life will in fact take that third base down there with a spawning pool to be thrown down momentarily. Overlord going to scout out now and see the timing of this gateway and know that first has indeed gone for that Nexus first build. I imagine we'll see three probes in gas shortly. And I'm curious to see just what sort of tech path first elects to go with. We saw very heavy Stargate play out of him in the previous game. Curious to see if he goes for that or whether he goes for some sort of timing attack off these early two bases. Of course, going the Nexus as quickly as he, as he did in this game will allow him to go for quite a powerful two base attack should he choose to do so. Second base just finished, well, natural expansion now finishing up for life here. Third base actually won't be very far far behind it, about 30 seconds left on that, and the spawning pool just about to pop. So you can see life hovering enough minerals for, to grab a pair of queens as soon as it pops, and life scouting out with this overlord, just trying to get, it, get an indicator if there's any pylons scattered around the base, so that he knows where he needs to scout uh, for future tech choice at the moment. First, only having put down two pylons, going to be very difficult for life to detect just what sort of technology uh, first is choosing to choosing to employ in this game. Actually we see first moving out, looks like he's going to drop a pylon, so first actually going to go for three relatively quick base himself, as a uh, five minute expansion for third base for Protoss is almost unheard of, in fact very difficult to hold on to against an aggressive Zerg such as Life. Life, of course, very well known for his excellent circling control, loves to get him out, get active on the map, and just has this nasty habit of slipping them into the Protoss base whenever they aren't looking. So, got to be super careful there. Looks like first we'll actually save the probe. Nice effort there from the Stalker. It's going to allow the probe to sneak in, drop that third base, and uh, they're really going to want to prevent those Zerglings from getting in any time soon, as uh, first really wants to uh, get this third base up and up and going, doesn't want to prompt life into any crazy sort of roach hydro production, just really wants to get this going, grab some of the benefit of it before his opponent realises just what's going on. Have a few sentries making their way onto the field now, already one in place, second one behind us, looks like first may well be going for some sort of sentry driven tech, still no robo factory, so probably not a uh, sentry immortal timing attack, the third base indicate, oh and that zergling's going to get a precious scout off if we uh, swap to life's vision and did in fact see the nexus going down, so life will be uh, will uh, will know exactly what's going on over here, sees a very greedy third base out of first, 
and uh, we'll see just how he elects to punish it or whether he goes for a fourth base of his own. Can't afford to say three base versus three base Protoss unless you're going for some some sort of very wonky uh, swarm host build. You need something highly effective. Most Zerg units do not trade in a very cost efficient ratio. Things like Banelin's not very useful against Protoss. Things like uh, Roach and Hydra do well, but Storms and Mortals and Colossus just uh, tend to do very nasty things to the Zerg uh, army. Life going to be drawn up quite heavily here. We see it's already 60 harvesters to 48, but uh, first doing quite well to keep pace with this as best he can. The Mothership Corps going to continue to kill these scouting Zerglings. We have more and more sentries making their way onto the field. So I imagine first we'll try and move out with this plus one timing in uh, in that 60 seconds to a minute. Twilight Council going down here, so likely a few Stalkers will be added on, as you don't often see uh, any sort of char charge lot builds with sentries. Normally that gas would be thrown to something like Archons for charge lot Archons. Really like the choice to throw down these photon cannons. Something about this third base on Deadwing that a lot of players uh, don't necessarily consider is just how difficult it is to hold this third base location. Can be siege from the low ground. Even things like Hydralisk with an Overlord can uh, pluck away at this drone line. So very difficult for a Protoss player, particularly once they've walled it off, to get out here and around to the right to defend it without the Zerg having an absolutely massive concave along that front. We see Life here trying to get a few of these Zerglings in. Photon Cannon going to force those right back. We have an Overseer scouting out the main base. Not a lot for him to see there. Can see the Forge whirring away, but uh, the real uh, information's here in the middle of the map. We're first picking off that drone from the fourth hatchery and uh, denying that. Meanwhile, we're trying to push in here and do some damage at the third base. These Hydras absolutely terrifying for this sentry force. You're going to have to drop some force fields very quickly. Those Hydras would just eat sentries for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Stalker, oh, looks like it'll just survive there. And uh, first we'll be able to back out of this quite safely. There's more than enough Hydralisks to scare first back to his side of the map. Perhaps uh, life here reminiscing over the previous game. Doesn't want to see the same sort of Stargate text which he saw in last game. Things like those carriers almost uh, catching him with his pants down and leaving him high and dry. But uh, going to get the Hydralis out nice and quickly this game, meaning that a tech switch in the air, not very viable at this point. Going to force first along the robotics uh, tech tree. A few more gateways coming down in the main base. Have some mortals on the way, along with the robotics base. So Colossi will be the weapon of choice here. Plus two attack has been started, so very much an upgrade advantage for first this point in time, but not a whole lot of units. We have a nice amount of Hydralis here, and see they're just able to explore this uh, this angle here of the third base, almost able to pick off that pile. That'd be a great pickup. Be able to sneak a few zerglings into the mineral line, do other annoying uh, tricks there. <laughs> the phoenix, unfortunately, isn't going to make it very far at all. Feel those hydrals actually getting caught here and slice and dice by the zealots. Uh, mortal here doing a lot of damage. Maybe taking down quite a few of these hydrals. Uh, not the best targets for immortals. They can chew through it with their DPS, but with enough Zerglings and Hydralis, this will be more than enough to force first back into his base. A very tight choke point, hard for either army to manoeuvre there, but uh, these cannons, really the unsung heroes of first army, with 11 kills between the two of them, really doing a great job of making it difficult for uh, life to make his way into this base. As we can see though, Hydralis able to make life very difficult from the low ground, sniping both those pylons and forcing the evacuation of the probes. 21 uh, workers in that gas guys are just a little bit of overkill there but these hydrals able to camp on the low ground force the mining to stop there overlord going to be picked off by the stalkers a little bit of a bad rally point for that uh, overlord a little bit unfortunate for him another one moving out hopefully life will pick this one up hydro is going to continue to be annoying for the probes picking another two off there is going to force first to, to really uh, commit to trying to stop these forces Zergling Hydra is fairly quick. Blink Stalker, though, certainly much quicker. First, won't want to won't want to actually engage us with the zealots to, with with the zealots with the Zerglings to tank damage. Hydras will take this engagement all day, every day. This is proving to be very irritating for first, as he forces out a photon overcharge. Life can just fall back and waste that energy on the mothership core. So. A little bit, little bit uh, unpleasant for first. This harassment should stop though now that the Colossi is out. First one is out. Colossus range about 40 seconds away. Second Colossus almost on the field. Plus three attacks also uh, coming out quite quickly now. Though we do have an Enduring Locust and quite a good number of Swarm Hosts on the map. We have nine already out. So looks like this could, could well... Uh, 
turn into a very different game to our pre previous game. There is no air units out of first a lot of swarm hosts coming out quite quickly. From life it's going to allow him to get very cost efficient engagements. Zealot drop in the main base. Warp prism will warp in a heck of a lot of zealots here. The uh, swarm host is going to be able to clean these up but the question is how much damage will these zealots get done? The hive very susceptible to uh, getting sniped by these zealots. Zealots starting to drop quickly. It looks like enough circlings will get caught back in time but the hive on half health very uh, very possible for this to be sniped by a drop later on in the game so got to be super careful there don't want to lose that hive will uh, cost you the ability to build things like vipers the protoss moving out in the middle of the map though unfortunately not enough colossi just yet to push into those swarm hosts so we can see as many of the uh, sentries actually getting cleaned up there by the locust and there's more than enough locusts to really cause the protoss to need to fall back inside his shell and decide just how does he want to deal with this can't fight into it Pure, pure gateway take. Three Colossus is a good start. Fourth one certainly going to help out there. Five is about the minimum you need to be able to safely push through this. So more swarm hosts being added on. Plus three missile attacks is on the field as well. Lots of static defense. Love this choice from life. And when you're going to play something very static like a swarm host build, really need plenty of this uh, static base defense to defend your crucial tech structures. Otherwise the Protoss player will will uh, be able to exploit your lack of mobility and really cause you a lot of problems. This this uh, Zergling Hydra Force, really quite quick. Certainly uh, an interesting choice to supplement the Swarm Host, not something we see all the time. Often uh, things like roaches or muters used to really uh, supplement. A nice uh, pick up there by the Stalker, a spotting life's attempt to ninja an expansion on that right-hand side. We have uh, first actually throwing down a Nexus of his own on this right-hand side. Nice choice as, this, as his own fourth base will get cancelled by this massive swell of Zerglings. And we see the Void Rays coming out, so a bit of a different uh, choice from last game. Instead of the masses of carriers, we are going to have some Void Rays, so looks like we'll have Void Ray Colossus, which is quite a terrifying army composition, not something we see every day, but uh, certainly a very powerful composition if you allow the Protoss player to build up. First has been on three base for quite some time now, has more than enough economy to support this. We have a few High Templars here, but uh, unfortunately High <laughs> Templars don't, uh, aren't, aren't going to be able to do a whole lot, don't have enough energy for Storm, Force Field's going to uh, prevent these Locusts from making in, but that wall is well and truly down, so Zergling's in the mineral line of first, causing a lot of problems here, four base for life, now well and truly established, first really needing to get his own fourth up, quite surely, I'll be be curious to see whether he creates pros at that location, whether he goes for some sort of uh, crazy mothership Mothership Core Recall across, always a good way to move probes to your natural expansion. Ooh, poor, poor Swarm Host is going to get picked off by those Blink Stalkers. Nice little pick up for first. Unfortunately, if you're not careful with those Swarm Hosts, they will uh, actually force the uh, the Slowpoke Swarm Host towards the front. So something you have to be very careful of when you're uh, shift queuing things on the Swarm Host. If you're not careful, we'll end up with you losing a few units unnecessarily. We have another drop in the main base few uh, zealots going to town on this fourth base, almost managing to take it down, but we're down to single zealot. Looks like that hatchery will survive, but barely. 43 health, and uh, it's got to be a little bit of relief for life there as he throws down yet more and more static defense. A few corruptors here, going to make life very difficult, both on the defense, going to prevent those warp prisms from being snuck into the base, also going to make it very difficult for uh, these Colossus to continue to be a viable uh, tech choice. Void Rays, of course, do love Corruptors. They will will eat them all day long. We are up to a substantial amount, already up to six Void Rays. Two more almost completed now, so going to be plenty of Void Rays to uh, threaten those Colossus, uh, thr threaten those Corruptors, sorry, but uh, of course the, uh, the Hydralis that still remain on the ground could supplement that uh, considerably. See how the upgrades are going for these Protoss air units. They are currently 0-0 upgrades, so not the greatest of upgrades, though when you do go for this Phoenix Phoenix Colossi style, the uh, upgrades on the on the air unit do tend to lag. Unfortunately, that is going to allow life to run straight into the third base here, clean up many more of these probes. Unfortunately, without the gas income, there's really going to cause problems for first. He won't have the necessary gas he needs to drop those colossi or those void rays. The army moving up behind this fourth base location. Unfortunately, the locust already there ahead of time. They're going to get cleaned up by these colossus quite quickly, but uh, another way will spawn things like the vipers. Very dangerous. Got to be careful. Make sure the high templar get off those feedbacks nice and quick. Otherwise, the crop the uh, vipers will manage to get those abducts off, and the colossus will die very quickly. 
what prism it should be out on the map. I, th I thought we saw it sneak around, unfortunately not uh, not being utilised at the moment. Corruptors uh, managing to pick off those close eyes as they're abducted by the Vipers. The Void Ray is still managing to do plenty of damage, but now that we're down to two Colossus, it will force our Protoss player back towards his base. This, uh, this ninja base at first actually quite well established. Unfortunate that Life hasn't managed to scout this as of yet. If he had managed to scout this, he would uh, be able to shut that gas income down. We have a lot of zealots making their way into the main base. Clean up this static defense, paving the way for that hive to be sniped later on. As the Protoss player forces his way through the front, Voidray is doing a lot of damage here. Plenty of static defense for life to fall back behind. Nice fungal growth there is going to pin these talkers and allow the locusts to pick those off. Got to be s and first has to be so careful now that these infestors are out. This army could be sniped very quickly. All it needs is one. Ooh, nice snatch there by the Viper to pick off that Void Ray. Remainder of the army does manage to uh, mass recall out of there. And very good choice, I have to say, first. As, he, as if he'd stuck around much longer, those fungal growths could have been a real problem. Plenty of Corruptors now on the field, plus one air upgrades. Does give him a slight edge on the Protoss. And oh, just shy of the amount of Corruptors needed to one-shot those Void Rays. Unfortunately, two more Corruptors would have guaranteed the kill there. And there's quite a dangerous force in run around just picking off those expensive Protoss gas units. So I, lo I like where First Mind is at, but un unfortunately not able to quite uh, execute it there. More Poor Zealot's been morphed into the main base of life. Going to pick off a Queen here, which is great as well. Zergling streaming, but plus three Zealots are going to slice and dice those all day long. A conflict here as the third base continues to be under siege from Life Swarm host. Unfortunately, his own main base struggling here as the Zealots continue to be rallied around. We're up to seven kills. He is a mentor, assassin Zealot here as he streaks around the map, cleaning up Life's drones. The, both these... Uh, both these drones on critically low health <laughs> as Zealot just continues to make his way through the Zerling. Big counter attack. Oh, we have a drop here from life out of the Overlords. Not every day that we see Zerg be the ones dropping, but I'm going to snipe the Templar Archives. That is a big pickup. Dark Shrine here could potentially go down as well. So this is a great play out of life. First swinging down with the Void Rays trying to clean this up. The Forge almost goes down. Unfortunately, looks like the Dark Shrine will survive, which will make life... Well, excuse the pun, but will make life very difficult for life here. This, this fourth base of first continues to go undetected. I've got to say, a little bit of a faux pas on life's behalf. First, of course, obvious that he's getting money from somewhere. Life can see that the fourth base hasn't been retaken, but it is a little bit uh, carried away defending here. These locusts are going to uh, manage to clean up this base defense yet again, but a fifth base now being established by first. It's going to give him a crazy economy. Life having established a ninja base of his own, starting to put a lot of pressure on trying to, trying to redrop these zerglings and hydras back in the base. Unfortunately, Overlord dies before it can unload, and, and that will be the end of this drop shenanigans out of first. Though there's a massive amount of base defense here as life tries to push forward. We have plenty of spore crawlers here, but unfortunately not enough Zerg supply to actually push back this terrifying Protoss death ball. Mothership Core is here as well. Void Rays with Prismatic Alignment just clean house so quickly. Spore crawlers unfortunately not going to be able to do a whole lot, though these Void Rays are absolutely destroyed by the Corruptors. Now plenty of them on the field, plus two attacks is going to allow them to one-shot those with ease. Air attacks now starting for the Protoss, but two levels behind that of the Zerg. We'll see if that causes him problems as life here is starting to move out, take position here in the middle of the map. These... <laughs> Oh, this mothership core has to be so very careful. These corruptors and vipers could well exploit that very quickly. We finally have zerglings moving out. Unfortunately, so many cannons now thrown down for first. Other base does have a few of its own. Probably a much easier target than uh, this main base. We have oh, mothership could well go down here. Another abduct is going to get it cleaned up. So those vipers certainly making making their uh, making their price back many times over as they've picked off many of these void rays and the mothership core. We have uh, a few DTs actually making their way and could potentially s snipe the Greater Spy here, and that's going to be quite a loss for life replacing that. More than the resource cost of replacing it is actually expensive time-wise. It does take 60 seconds for that Spy, oh sorry, 140 seconds for that Spy to go back up, and uh, another minute or two for it to morph to a Greater Spy, so there's quite some time before it can be replaced. Massive bank for life here though with 3k minerals, 6k gas. Often it's the Protoss player you'll see banking up that sort of bank, particularly when they're being as cost efficient 
as uh, First has been, but uh, un unfortunately for First, Life really making great use of those Corruptors and Vipers, continuing to get active on the map, just take out a lot of these very gas-intensive Protoss units. If we look at the units lost tab, normally you would actually see this the other way around with the Zerg player on 24k and the Protoss player on 17k, but we can see fir first, unfortunately, is the one that's uh, mining out the map, spreading out as a Zerg player ordinarily would. And uh, on the other hand, Life being extremely cost efficient with his units and uh, trying to starve first out as best he can, though for this tactic to work, he has to shut down these bases. A six base Protoss player is terrifying. Locust going to siege this location, force to cancel on those cannons as Zerglings and Hydralis try to make their way into this new location. Dark Templar Warpian is going to put a stop to this push as uh, there is no Overseer here with these Hydralis. Great thinking out of life, but unfortunately not enough units to quite make it work. These Void Rays forcing their way in, dodging that storm. Nice, nice little uh, juke there from life. He pulls over another Void Ray, does go down very quickly, and two more Void Rays will join. And this is just great great use of these Corruptors and Vipers out of life, continuing to work down these Protoss units. We do see the first Tempest on the way. N nice choice here out of first, really needs increased range as those Vipers just picking away this Protoss force with grim efficiency. Swarm host continuing to lay siege to these locations, fourth base almost uh, back up here as the Ninja 5th and 6th have been mining for some time. This is one of the few uh, one of the few drawbacks to how life has played out this game really hasn't allowed him, allowed him to counter-attack and destroy these locations. If he could pick off these pylons quickly enough, he would be able to take this base. No no units to morph in, and the Protoss army very slow to reinforce. He's going to make a move here, going for the cannons first. I, I, I don't mind the choice Adrenal Gland Zerglings are so very good, but still only 1-2 Zerglings here, so not, not nearly as effective as they perhaps should be. Instead, uh, life spending all of his income on... Uh, on his other unit things like the Corruptors, Vipers, actually we see a Mutalist tech switch here out of life, so certainly an interesting choice. I gotta say I do like I do like the uh, thought of this Mutalist tech switch. Void Ray is certainly not very good at, against Mutalist at all, we don't see many Archons on the field. It's exactly what life needs to do, a lot of damage, plus three air attacks is on the way. His Locust continuing to make life very difficult, but uh, life going to be forced to pull back here. We do have plenty of Fungals here, which will both reveal and do damage to this unit, and the Mothership is going to go down again. Two shot by those Corruptors there. The Vipers give chase if Void Rays can't fall back quick enough. Oh, High Templar picked off, I love the pick off there, two High Templars. Pulled. Lots of feedback's going to clean up the remainder of those Vipers. It's time now for life to fall back. Though so many expensive gas units did go down. We see it's now 32 to 23,000 resource lo lost life. Showing us a totally different way of playing Zerg here. Mulus making their way across the field here. Going to be able to pick off the workers at the gas at this third base location if they so choose. And I do think life will go for it. I love the choice here. Unfortunately, not quite in time. That first gas guys are almost completely mined out. Second one about to go down. Life actually going to snipe the Stargates. Great choice here. Oh, plenty of high tempo. They would have been a juicy snipe, but they can't afford to uh, can't afford to engage there with all the void rays making their way into the fray. Going to pick off a few loose pylons. Though plenty of excess uh, excess excess pylons on the map here for first. Mutilus going to continue continue to make life difficult. The Void Rays trying to engage as best they can, but fi but uh, Corruptor Mutalisk is everything life needs to deal with this composition out of first. The uh, Tempest, very cost effective, but unfortunately their long range, slow rate of fire certainly not going to allow them to deal with the deal with this Mutalisk and Corruptor force. We see life just swinging through this fifth base, now starting to finally get some traction here. This is massive Mutalisk cloud. We have 20 Mutalists on the field now. Clean up all of these probes. Pylons have gone down, so cannons are unpowered, and that's finally going to allow life to really shut down the mining at these locations. Surprised that we haven't seen first throw down a few more cannons, though not a whole lot of income here. Snipe the other pylon, that will shut down both the, both the warp in and the cannons. That's going to leave this base exposed as well and force first right out of position. Very dangerous move for first if he comes to defend these bases, which are his entire source of income. He will leave his other base exposed. We have a second Mutalist flock here, causing problems on the other side of the field. Going to clean up all these pylons, make life very difficult for those Stargates, which will be shut down. Phoenix production started now, but it's going to be too little, too late as these, these Stargates start to get on power. We have three Phoenix, six Phoenix now. 
we'll see these mutilists going to fall back. <laughs> we have a massive cloud of Phoenix. Seven Phoenix will force this second group back. The remainder of the Corruptors and mutilists are going to swing in from life, and these Phoenix have to be so careful. They fly into the Corruptors, and we'll just get annihilated by the heavy firepower of the thickly armored Corruptors. We have a counterattack of Dark Templars in the main, are being spotted by the Spore Crawls, unfortunately. Only one mutilist here to clean them up. As soon as that Spore goes down, we will see nothing left to spot them. They will be able to snipe the Hive. We have what is turning into a very ridiculous game too between life and first almost as silly as game number one as it goes into what what is a very awkward sort of base trade here is there's almost no income for either player if we look at the mining tab it is less than 1200 minerals between both our players and it's become a very uh, a very uh, intriguing style of base race certainly not something we see every game Certainly not something we see when there's twenty, when there's almost ten bases taken on the map currently. We see both players running out of bases left, right, and centre. Minerals and gas an issue for both our players. A little bit of minerals banked up here for life, but uh, life is going to force the force the mass recall yet again on first army is it forced to fall back nothing to deal with those mules another 10 on the way from life he feels he feels a weakness of this protoss composition he's going to apply pressure until they crack one uh, three void rays here and five tempers now the corruptors are joining going to clean up all of these colossi it's going to make life very difficult for any of the remaining swarm hosts of which there are 14 the swarm host is going to be able to do a lot of damage and life just jumping on top of this protoss army as supply plummets for first it looks like life may take this regame here after a crazy hour we'll see we'll see life get an edge in this series as first unfortunately unable to make things work here on deadwing losing this second game what is it been a very very drawn out but action packed series between first and life dt still running wild in the main sniping infested but unfortunately the remaining mutilisks and uh, infest are going to be able to clean that up so excellent uh, choice from life there using the fungal growth to reveal that dark templar remainder of these swarm hosts coming down to siege the fourth base and this is going to cut off what little incomes left from first i love the multitasking of first splitting his air units into th two or three groups we have mutilisks all over the map here Nexus about to go down at this fourth base location. We have an, have another uh, have another ninja base of life being established. Well, two double expand from life behind this shouldn't be necessary as these swarm hosts do successfully siege that location. And it looks like first will tap out. GG. What an what an amazing regame here between these two. Just some crazy Protoss vs Zerg action. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Sorry for the delay between games. We have some more coming up on the channel this week. So I have a bit more time than usual. So hopefully we'll see plenty more StarCraft action. Hope you guys have been enjoying the Red Bull Battlegrounds. As we speak, it was concluded. Some fantastic games. They're not going to spoil the results. You ought to check out the uh, broadcast of the finals. If you, uh, if you missed it, it will be rebroadcast shortly. So... Uh, jump on Red Bull's Twitch channel and enjoy those classic games. In the meantime, there's Aussie StarCraft, and I'll catch you in the next cast.